All right, now let's move on to talk about TCPI. When you talk about TCPI, well, what you need to factor in is TCPI is like a lie detector test. You're probably like, what? A lie detector test? Yeah. You can use TCPI to know when people are bluffing and lying about how much they're actually going to end up spending. For example, someone tells you that TCPI of his or her project is one, you'll be like, okay, that means for each dollar you spend, you're going to accomplish a dollar's worth of work. That's doable. But if someone tells you that his TCPI or her TCPI is two, that means for each dollar that they spend, they are going to achieve two dollars worth of work. Now that's a little bit far-fetched. How on earth are they doing that? Do they have a free resource working? Or what? Are they working like throughout the weekend at twice the rate? How are they getting twice as much for each dollar that they spend is a question you want to ask. Now it's even worse when the TCPI is clearly a lie, clearly, obviously impossible with the resources they've got. They say, oh, my TCPI is four. Or you do the calculation, you find out that it's a four. Not possible. So your TCPI is really a measure of how hard do we need to work, or what do we need to put in as far as efficiency in order to achieve management's objective or management's goal for your budget. Now let's say in our previous examples if you followed we had BAC as being full. Do you remember that? We talked about the budget at completion if I can find the slide here BAC was full. And how did we get to that? How did we arrive at that conclusion? Well we talked about BAC being the total for the whole project so we talked about one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, four dollars. Basically the addition of all of the projected spend for the project across all those days, which was four dollars. Okay? So what your TCPI takes into consideration is your budget at completion, your earned value, how much you actually got done, and whether you can achieve management's goal. So going back to that example we just looked at, um, your TCPI would be BAC minus EV divided by BAC minus AC. And all these are in brackets over here. All right. Now, this is your TCPI based on the BAC. Okay, Based on the BAC. Bear that in mind as we discuss here. Okay. Now if we take that into consideration, your TCPI, using the previous example we looked at, is going to be 4 minus 0 0.25, remember your EV was 0 0.25, okay, and we're going to divide all of that by 4 minus, what was your AC? It was 1.5, do you remember that? So in other words, um, we're going to have TCPI is equal to 3.75 divided by 2.5. Now, I should have pointed this out to you, but really, what do the, these metrics here actually mean? It's very simple. TCPI is only your work remaining divided by your funds remaining. That is all TCPI is. So if you do the mats, let's go to Excel, 3.75 divided by 2.5, we've got 1.5. Okay? So when management looks at this, they're going to ask you, how are you going to achieve $1.50 as far as the amount of work, $1.50 worth of work by spending $1? where's the other 50 cents worth of work coming from? You're going to be like, oh, okay, well, it looks like I can't meet your objective, which was $4. It means that I need more money. And they ask you, well, we need you to go back to the drawing board, find out how much money you need to complete this project. So you go away, you go with a team, you know, do some brainstorming, look at different options, whether you're going to crash, fast-track the project, what have you. 
You then find out that the actual amount to the EAC that you need to tell management is, let's, let's say you need to tell management it's $8 for this example, right? So you come back to management and you say, oh, my EAC, right, is going to be $8. I need $8 to get all the work done, which means $8 is the final total for the project. That's my new final projected total which is really more like a revised BAC if you think about it. The moment you go to management with that, if they really use TCPI, they're going to do another TCPI, but it's going to be based on the EAC that you just threw out. So they're going to take that number and they're going to say, well, your TCPI would be BAC minus EV based on what you just told them, divided by EAC minus AC, right? So if you do the mats for TCPI based on the EAC, TCPI based on the EAC is going to be equal to 4 minus just exactly what you had over here, only that we're going to put in a new value. So we're going to put in an 8 for your EAC, right? That's easy to understand, isn't it? And of course, I should have had these in brackets over here as well, just so you don't get confused with the mats going on here. And your TCPI at the end is going to be equal to 3.75 divided by what? 6.5. It's going to be 3.75 divided by 6.5. And let's do the mats. Shouldn't take too long to do the mats here divided by 6.5 and that's going to give us 0 0.57 0 0.57 and management is going to say okay well that looks rather doable that means for each dollar you spend you're going to get 57 cents of work done and you're like yeah and they're like well not too good performance but that's doable and depending on the organization they may ask you to revise the EAC they might ask you to, you know, explain why do you think the EAC is going to be, you know, that high. Because obviously it indicates that the EAC has a lot of cushion in it. But um, based on how this project, if you'd been following, had been going, it's probably justifiable. Okay? And that's really what you use TCPI for. It's really a pointer to how much do I need to do or how well do I need to be performing to achieve management's goal. And that really rounds up our review of earned value. So a few things to remind you about. Know your metrics for EV, AC and PV. Earned value is your budgeted cost of work. What? Work performed. It's the work that you actually put in. Actual cost of course is actual cost of the work performed. PV is the budgeted cost of work. What? P is for plan. When you think about plan, think of schedule. And we put the S there. And those are the four key metrics. And then you go in to derive your CPI, your CV, your SPI, your SV. Don't forget, in all these scenarios, earned value always comes first. Regardless the formula, earned value is always first. If it's a variance, it's subtraction. If it's an index, it's division. You're going to divide something by something. We're talking about C for cost. We're going to have AC in any equation that has got the C. If we're talking about schedule. We're going to be talking about plan value, PV. That's going to be in all those equations. And that's really the breakdown of your earned value. Then when you go into BAC, your budget at completion, which we've talked about, is your, I beg your pardon, your VAC, I should say is your BAC minus your EAC. Alright, that's your variance at completion. And then your EAC, you know you've got all sorts of scenarios for EAC, but the most important one is actual cost plus estimate to complete. Because you're going to break down your estimate to complete right into your budget at completion minus your planned uh, earned value. So this will be looking 
like that. All right, and then you've got different scenarios. You could divide that whole thing there by CPI times SPI, or you can say your earned value is equal to BAC divided by CPI if things are going to continue the way they have till date. And that's really a breakdown of earned value. I hope it made sense. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know. All the best. Don't spend all your days and nights doing formulas because you need to do something even, even a lot more important. Do you know what it is? ITTOs. Inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs. So, ITTOs. And um, there's actually some information about this on YouTube, just in case you wanted to know more about ITTOs. All the best on the exam, and speak to you soon.